Whenever a novel is adapted to screen, one thing that almost every fan does is examine the changes from the source material. One of the interesting things about Denis Villeneuve's Dune is that not only is it a book-to-screen adaptation, but it is also the third successful on-screen attempt to do so. Because of that, there's a lot of elements within these various interpretations that can be compared to each other. Overall, I think that the miniseries itself is probably my favorite when it comes to faithfulness to the source material. I also think the format of a televised miniseries allowed for more time to be given to all the characters. There are issues that I have with it as well. Duke Leto's performance, I think William Hurt's casting for Duke Leto, that's kind of a hindrance for me in that interpretation, but it has a lot of good things that I like. And overall, a very faithful attempt at the story. And working with their very limited budget as well, I think it did a wonderful job. Also, the miniseries, that's my favorite Lady Jessica. Saskia Reeves, I loved her performance as Lady Jessica, and I think there was just more time given to the character to develop. Each adaptation has things and specific performances and characters that I prefer over others. So I think if I'm going to rank the adaptations, I think I can safely say that David Lynch's version is on the bottom. When it came to the character of Paul Atreides and the main themes, I have a very significant issue with how David Lynch portrayed it. But I liked Kama Glockland's performance and I loved the costumes and the set design and it really was very immersive in a lot of respects. I definitely respect David Lynch's version for that. And I love, we got to see the Navigators, really cool scene that wasn't in the book between the Emperor and the Navigator. But I think it's a really cool scene and does a lot of work to build out the universe of Dune that actually establish the Spacing Guild's influence on the Emperor. So it was faithful in that respect, even if the scene was original. And of course, David Lynch brought us a proper twisted Mentat, Pied of DeVries. Brad Dourif was great in that. He's got a handle on those kinds of roles. They each have something that I really do appreciate, even if they have flaws. I think altogether they make a really great adaptation of Frank Herbert's story. But when it comes to Denis Villeneuve's love Duke Leto, his relationship with Paul, just the character of Paul, and establishing the friendship between Duncan Idaho, I really appreciated. I did videos on that as well, and I think Timothy Chalamet is the closest to what I envisioned of the character. But yeah, Barbara Cordatova was a great Chani. Very close to the source material and how the character is, the closest portrayal of the character. She was, of course, a strong warrior. Every Fremen is and having to survive this the hellscape, basically. But she was very spiritual and that is a huge part of her character. She wasn't a Fadaikin, she was a Sayadina. She was a lower ranking priestess and she participated in a lot of the observances and rituals of the Fremen culture. That's my favorite performance and portrayal of the character. The 1984 movie was very flawed, but it got me to read the book. So it holds a special place in my heart. I think that's the case with a lot of people. And the same thing too with the newest adaptation. I know a lot of people got into it because of these new films. And at least if you're new, if your first experience was to evil in those films, when you read the book, it's obviously going to be a very different experience. It's going to have so much more world building for the reader to dive into. If you like the films, I really hope that people would dive into the books because it's so delicious. It's so good. And at the end of the day, books are best. And as far as characters, I was so happy in Doom Part 1 to see justice for Duncan Idaho. And I was surprised about Jason Momoa's casting. I saw him in Stargate Atlantis, so I definitely think he could do the role physically. Ronan Dex, he kind of is that kind of character in that, so I could picture it. And he did very well. I still love that scene. Duncan Idaho's sacrifice. So well done. I loved it. We'll see what happens moving forward, though. I'm very curious to see how that's going to work out in Doom Messiah. They all have their positives and negatives, their pros and cons. But I do feel like the sci-fi miniseries has an upper hand, even though it kind of works out to the same time frame of the two parts of Dune, basically have the same amount of time almost as the sci-fi miniseries, but they were able to put more of the story in there and convey it. The time jump and Jessica and Aaliyah's characters, they're able to do so much more faithful to the source material. But Denis Villeneuve's is definitely more cinematic. It looks amazing. And I love the way Denis Villeneuve approached it and his filmmaking technique and not overuse of CG. You see the budget on the screen, definitely. And it's all of these amazing sets that were built. And it really comes across in the performances of the actors when they have more of an authentic performance when they are on an actual physical set that they can react to. 
I think I like Doom Part 1 a bit better, but I just don't like everything about it. There are things that I wish were in there that aren't, and things I wish were different, and things that I do worry about moving forward, but there's a lot that I do like. I love Austin Butler's Fade Rotha. I love their duel at the end. And I wish there was more of it, of these characters. It's hard when you have this great ensemble of characters and you want each to have their due. I just wish through for how it was in it. Villeneuve, please release the deleted scenes. I just think that's so unfair. Cut out the scenes, fine, but can you at least put them on the DVD, please? Justice for Stephen McKinley Henderson. He had a health scare in filming Doom Part 2 as well, and he put a lot of work into this character in this role. I think it's worthy of seeing. I'm really salty about that, and I will continue to be salty about it. Tyler DeVries was the most interesting character in the book in 84 movie, not in this version. That was another thing I've been very vocal about. You have David Dismalchian, and I was so excited for his casting because he's great. He could definitely do some weird twisted things with this role. But yeah, they really diminished his role. And the Baron, too, was not really in it that much. I think the sci-fi miniseries is probably my favorite version of the Baron Harkonnen. But Brad Dourif as the Twisted Mentat was perfect casting, and they gave him the time to be that, to be twisted. A lot of my problems, too, with the Evil Noves is that I wish there was more. In terms of Fade Ratha, though, Austin Butler killed it. That's my favorite. David Lynch's version of Fade Ratha is second best. Sting is the people's champ. It's iconic. But Austin Butler was so good. He disappeared into that role. I really did like the whole Getty Prime sequence. And that was a deviation from the source material that was very interesting, I thought. That was the highlight of Doom Part 2 for me was Paul and Fade. Timothy Chalamet's Paul Atreides was really good. Definitely award-winning caliber performances from them both. In particular, the scene in the underground catacombs where he's addressing the masses of, I guess, the fundamentalists there. Love that scene. Very well done in terms of trying to adhere to the source material. There was a couple of things that really did fit very well that were in accordance to the spirit of that particular scene. I also liked Lady Fenring. I thought her performance was actually very close to how the Bene Gesserit should be portrayed in demonstrating their influence and manipulation of the rich and powerful. I did not like the Gamjabar test, and I wish it wasn't in there. And I liked Reverend Mother Mohayim in Doom Part 1, but not so much in Doom Part 2 because of the deviations in the source material. And to me, the deviations were enough that they kind of don't fit together, Doom Part 1 and 2, when it comes to several characters. I think Stilgar seems very different in Doom Part 2 than he appears in the first one. I love how he appears in the first one. That was great. But there are some differences there. I have some issues with the Reverend Mother in terms of the way they portrayed the amount of influence, her exact plan. Because it is her plan that led to the Atreides downfall. That is such a huge deviation from the source material. She didn't want to endanger the Atreides and Harkonnen bloodlines at all. That was the primary goal, was to preserve the lines and actually try to maintain peace between the two. She didn't want the Harkonnens and Atreides to go to war, which is why they were going to orchestrate a union between the Harkonnen heir and the Atreides daughter that Jessica was supposed to have. So it was very different from Doom Part 1, where Reverend Mother Mohayim is pleading with the Baron to leave Lady Jessica and Paul alone, put them in exile or whatever. But that was her interest, was so that they would survive. And that definitely seemed to deviate from her goals in Doom Part 2, which was to basically replace Paul with Fade in terms of their breeding program. But if you're going to do that, if he's your last chance, is what they seem to indicate. I don't think it was wise to risk that by testing him with the gum jabbar and i don't think their reasoning made sense to me personally which was oh he likes pain so that's why he survived but despite all the nitpicks that i can point to with each version i'm personally glad that each one of these on-screen interpretations of dune has brought something new to the table that both general audiences and fans can appreciate and ultimately, I hope that any new addition to the Dune universe will encourage viewers to explore the wonderful, bizarre, and fascinating world that Frank Herbert created. But I'm curious to know what you think of the different on-screen retellings of Dune. What are some of your favorite and least favorite elements from across the three adaptations? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. And if you're looking for other ways to show your appreciation, you can check out my Patreon page, where members get access to exclusive content and perks. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.